you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Look at this. An unemployed financial advisor apparently despondent over his troubles. Shot and killed his wife, his mother-in-law, and three children. Before taking his own life in a gated community in the northwest San Fernando Valley, according to LAPD. Officers responding to a call from concerned friends found the bodies about 7.15 a.m. in a two-story house in the 20,600 block of Como Lane in Porter Ranch, according to LAPD Deputy Chief Michael Moore. The identities of the victims were not immediately released. Moore said we believe this to be a murder-suicide. He said it appears the gunman killed his family and then took his own life. The 45-year-old suspect used a handgun he purchased September 16th, Moore said. The weapon was found next to the gunman's body, officials said. The bodies of the man's 39-year-old wife, 70-year-old mother-in-law, and three sons, ages 19, 12, and 7, were found inside the home's various bedrooms. Authorities had earlier said that one of the victims was the gunman's mother, but now say it was his mother-in-law. Friends and neighbors identified the couple as Kartnik and Subasri Rajaram. Their name sounds like uh, a clue in the jumble, like a scrambled word, <laughs> who had lived in the neighborhood for about two years. Moore said police believe that the gunman shot the victim sometime after 6 p.m. Saturday and that he had left behind three letters indicating that he had carried out the killings. He said the gunman had worked previously for Price Waterhouse and Sony Pictures and, quote, had attested to some financial difficulties. He had become despondent over his financial situation. Speaking of bad financial situations, the Dow Jones Industrial Average today fell as much as 800 points at one point, finally ending up down... 369 points, so it did come back a bit. It was only down 369 points, about 3.5%. NASDAQ down 84 points, about 4.3%. S&P 500, almost 3.9%. That's the deal. So now we have somebody in Porter Ranch who apparently murdered his family and killed himself over the financial difficulties. How bad is it for you? How much money have you lost? Have you lost a job? Have you lost money in the stock market? Is your 401k down, your IRA down? Do you feel desperate? Do you understand the des desperation of this guy? Are things really, really bad for you? If they are, call me now. 1-800-5800-TOMS. 1-800-5800-866. Like us. The Tom Likas Show. Likas Show. Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I'm an avid listener. I'm good for two hours every day. Um, I have, I've, I've actually, and I'm not one of those crazy suicidal people, but I'll tell you something. I've lost a lot of money in the market. I'm a position trader. It was my savings. I I call into your show all the time. What it is, and I, I just kind of, I'm just starting to get my head around it. It creeps into your life. I woke up this morning, and I swear to God, I could understand why people do these kinds of things. And some of the things that are really weird, one of the things I've had difficulty since things have turned in the past month or two, I've had trouble listening to you. And I'll tell you exactly why. In the beginning, in January and February, <clears throat> I would listen to you, and I'm driving around, and I listen to you talk about, you know, you do well, and you're smart, and you're educated, and you talk about your house in the hills, and I can identify with that. I'm kind of right there, just a junior version of what's going on. So I giggle to myself, and I listen to some of the people that call in, and I kind of felt different. And then all of a sudden, you get hit like this, and you realize that your status in life has changed, 
It's difficult to listen. Look, it's difficult for me to listen to people that are making money, that are doing well, because it just, that contrast is always there and it's always rubbing you. And I could totally understand why people do that. I, I thought about it. Now, it's, it's, it's insipid when you think rationally that money can be made, but I can, let's put it this way, when it happens to you directly, it becomes plausible. When you kill your wife and your kids and then yourself, that's pretty bad. That's no, that, that's psychotic. I would never do something like that. I mean, that's he's obviously had other issues, but I'm talking about when people when people think about doing it to themselves because of a, a bad situation, that becomes a little more understandable. And um, it's so, what keeps you from doing something like that? I think. Um, a that I'm not I'm not crazy. B I think that I was smart enough to make this money once. That I am smart enough to make it again. You know I'm young enough. I have potential. Um, it's just one of those things where you just kind of it's things get so bad and you it almost seems like you know what <clears throat> this is a better alternative. Now I I, I don't give into that. <clears throat> I don't feel like I, I'm on the verge of you know driving my car off the road, but. Uh, I, I swear to God, it seems like a plausible alternative. And then you think about those people in their 20s that, that, that jumped out of windows in the big crash. I mean, it almost, in a, a sick way, seems like a, a, a plausible alternative. You just get so upset over the situation. It's, it's weird. Well, the people in the worst position right now are people about to retire. Imagine the people who've been saving all these years. They got 401ks, they got IRAs, what have you. And then the market has dropped, what, 25%? Are you kidding me? Uh, well, what do you do then? Work till you're 80? I don't know. Thanks for the call. Casey on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, buddy? Great. Look, man, this, this is just crazy now. I mean, a guy had to kill himself. He couldn't get out of debt. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I got to work and bust my ass. Is that okay to say? Of course. <laughs> okay, good. All day long, you know, I work, I work a 10-hour shift. Four times a week, you know, try to work 40 hours, and then I got to try to go to another different job that I have, trying to work another 40 hours a week, do whatever I can, you know, to try to make money. Half that's got to go into my gas, the other's got to go for the car, the other's got to go for the apartment, the electricity, the cable. It, it's just, you can't even afford to live anymore, you know? That's why the guy had to shoot himself, because otherwise he wasn't going to make it. Well, prices are going down, I can tell you that. I just got a uh, circular from Costco. And you know all the people I've been telling you give up Starbucks? Yeah. Costco now is selling you five twenty dollar Starbucks gift cards, you know, for worth a hundred bucks. Uh for eighty bucks. <laughs> so uh anybody who is still going to Starbucks, they should at least go to Costco and get twenty percent off. Yeah, I hear you. But I mean that's that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You're gonna see prices going down on food. You know, the subway's promoting five dollar footlongs, for example. And you've got ninety nine cent value menus at McDonald's and Taco Bell and KFC. Uh it's everywhere. Yeah, it's those everywhere. value menus do do help out a little bit. Prices are gonna come down. I, I see more of my friends at Trader Joe's all the time now. And I oh. see more of my friends at Costco. Got to. I mean, where else can you go? You know, wholesale prices are perfect. Now, but what do you think about this guy in Porter Ranch who killed his wife and kids and then himself? What do you think about that? That's that's just a little crazy. I mean, I know he, he probably was struggling, but to go and kill everybody and then himself is just a little out there. I agree with you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're taking more calls than ever on the Tom Likas show. It's Ann. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Ann. I'm calling in because I could definitely see how uh, the person in Porter Ranch could do that. Um, I work for the company formerly. You could known see as... how he could do that. Does that mean you could do that? No, 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 no. Why could you see how he could do that? Based off of calls that I've been getting from clients, I work for the company formerly known as Lehman Brothers. What is it now? Uh, Barclays Capital. Okay, so Barclays, Bartley, I, you know, so many of these mergers and acquisitions took place. Right. I, I'm lost about which brokerage firm is owned by what bank. Right, but we've had people call in, you know, asking during the whole transition period during the sale, uh, calling in asking for their total market value, saying, "Oh, it was 15 million last week. What is it now? Oh, it's down to about two. And customers flipping out. I could, I could see how it could happen. I could see how it's possible. 
it, it sucks that things have gotten this bad. And I mean, for a while there, myself and everyone that I worked with, we didn't even know if we were going to have jobs just because Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy. Let me ask you a question since you're anonymous. What do you tell clients to do when things like this? Like the market was down 800 points today at one point. What do you tell people to do? Wait it out. Now, is that... Honestly, just speaking between you and me, is that the best thing to do? Jim Jim uh, Kramer on CNBC, he said, get out, get out, get out. Speaking between you and me, I'm on radio. No, but uh, no, we tell clients to wait it out. It really depends on the situation. But do you think waiting it out is the right thing to do? Well, I mean, if you look in the long run, everything has its, you know, its history of going up and going down. Same with real estate. I mean, it's probably going to go back up based on the past. Right. But some people can't wait five to ten years for it to go back up. Right. But, I mean, that's up to the client. Right. But, again, I know it's up to the client, but I'm asking you, do you ever tell somebody to wait it out when, in reality, the best thing for them to do would be to liquidate everything? We we try to advise clients as best we can, but we, most of the time we tell them to wait it out. I mean, come on. Don't you have an incentive to make people wait it out rather than stop paying you that fee they're paying you? Exactly. I mean, you go for the benefit of the client slash the company. They have to meet somewhere. Yes. For example, one of the uh, brokerage firms I work with uh, recommended some uh, mutual funds to me, some of them are these boutique mutual funds. And I was told that even though they were not the top performers when the market was going crazy, the advantage of these funds was that uh, in a down market, these will suffer a lot less than others. Right. They were wrong. And now, of course, they're going to want to meet with me to tell me that I should stay in there and wait it out because I'm paying them a fee. But come on. You have that, to do what's best for you. <laughs> well, I understand that. But I, I'm just trying to, what I'm trying to point out for people who have a broker or who do business with people like you is that you have a vested interest. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I, this is just your job. You're doing your job. You have a vested interest in keeping them in no matter what. No matter how bad things get, if people are jumping off buildings on Wall Street, you'll be telling clients to hang in there. Yes, we will. That's my point. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Anthony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing, sir? Doing great. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I love that last caller. You had to stay in. She's like the 911 caller saying uh, on 911, yeah, we're on our way. Stay there. We'll, we'll, we'll get help to you as soon as we can. Right. Rather, rather just tell the truth, saying, you know what? It's a poker game. you got to know when to get in, know when to get out. And all the people who knew when to get out are already out. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, this time last year, I was the vice president of corporate banking for the largest bank in Orange County. Uh, now I live in a small little place with my, I have a two month old son and, uh, let's just say I live in a very affluent area in Orange County, uh, South Orange County and, and Dean tells me you're in a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. I'm in a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm doing everything I can to keep my head above water. I just came from a, a job interview at a Budweiser, uh, distribution plant and, uh, the, the rejectionist receptionist was like, yeah, just sit down and, and, and fill an application. And when they see vice president on your on your resume, they're like, why would you want this job? Wait, let's, the, let's, let's repeat what you just said. You were formerly a vice president of the biggest bank in Orange County. Right. And now you've applied for a job at a Budweiser distributorship. As a, as a area manager, yeah. And, and the uh, receptionist there is trying to tell you that you're overqualified. Basically, thanks for coming in, but you don't have a shot in hell. So you're willing to do a job like that, and they won't hire you? Oh, you, you, you have no idea. I, I, tr I applied as a job as a commercial dishwasher salesman. You name it, I'm out there doing it. I'm an educated guy. I've made over well over six figures, and I think I'm pretty smart. But this this market has just kicked my ass among so many others. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm not saying I'm at the end of my rope, but I'm pretty damn close. And it's like, what do you do? You know, I'd never smoke my wife and child. I may even just leave, but I've never, I would never, you know, uh, put them in the grave. Now, have you heard this story about the family that was found dead in Porter Ranch? Yes, I have. I have. What do you think about them? 
You know what? Uh, maybe the guy was caught up in the whole keeping up with the Joneses. Once he realized he couldn't keep up with the Joneses, uh, he said, you know, uh, this is the only way out. I can't handle the humiliation of losing my house, losing my car, losing everything I have, losing my golf club membership. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put everybody 16 under, including myself. Do you relate to that? You know what? In a, in a small way, because, I, again, I live in a very exclusive area in Southern California. I think you've heard of it. It's called Laguna Beach. And uh, it's, it's a very clicky, and everybody knows everybody. And when something goes sideways, everybody knows what's going on. So it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to try to maintain your stature when everybody knows that, you know, they know, they know what's going on. I'm sure that's true. Steve in Parkland, Oregon. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Great. Uh, you know, there's a there's a town in Oregon, uh, Bend, Oregon, and um, uh, this year they've had three really prominent developers kill themselves, uh, like land developers, um, and, and it's all because of uh, you know things that are getting worse now were were really bad there at the beginning of the year. Uh, I mean, one guy actually built. I mean, he sunk all of his money into a housing development based on the Lord of the Rings. It was called the Shire. And uh, when when it didn't sell and nobody wanted to live in Hobbit Town, um, he killed himself. And it's I, I think that this is the tip of the iceberg for people like that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so you hear this story about a guy in the northwest San Fernando Valley killing himself, killing his wife, his kids, his mother-in-law. Do you relate to it? You know, uh, I, I'm doing okay right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh -huh. it's, you know, I mean, it's not, uh, I, I mean, I, I think I've made some pretty good business decisions in the last year. And, um, you know, no, it, it's a cheap way out no matter what. I mean, no matter how bad it gets, you can always go do, do something at Wendy's, you know. I mean, uh, killing your wife and kids is a really bad idea. So, or, no. Or I maybe, can't maybe, it maybe he can't get a job at Wendy's like the guy who tried to get the job at a Budweiser distributorship. Well, he was a VP at a bank, wasn't he? He had been a VP at a bank, yes. yes. Did, didn't he help start all of this with making bad decisions initially? Well, I don't know. I don't know what bank it is, and I don't know whether the bank was involved in subprime mortgages. That's a good question. Don't know the answer, but that's not why he was turned down for the job. He was turned down for the job because they think he's overqualified. Well, um... It, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's not, I mean, you know, the, the, there's no easy answer. It's going to be tough for everybody. Um, uh, and, you know, but but killing yourself and your family is really not the right idea. I agree with that. Will on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, Tom. Yes. Yeah. People come on your show saying they're willing, they, they, they identify with this guy killing his family, make me, they disgust me, make me sick to my stomach. Uh, I don't care how bad it gets. When you sell everything you got, do what you got to do. You live in a rat hole or McDonald's if you have to. But you don't kill your wife and kid. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And we've actually talked to people who said they've considered that, that not necessarily killing their wife and kids, but killing themselves. We've, we've already heard from people this hour. Yeah. That's weak, weak. I think it's weak. I think there's just nothing, nothing that bad. This is weak. I happen to agree with that, by the way. Uh, you know, uh, if you were good enough to make money before, you'll make money again. Right. I mean, but it's just ridiculous, ridiculous to me. Some people, who knows how far in the hole they are. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Great. Thank you. Uh, one thing, uh, these people are talking about the, that this guy killed his family and all that. You know, all these people, don't they have money stashed in the bank or somewhere that they can, they know that if something happens, they're going to, you know, okay, something's happening, let's, 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 let's cool it on the spending, but we still have money to back us up. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about generating their family, you know, paying their mortgage, paying their car. Well, I, I do think it's time for people to get back to basics, paring down their debt, paring down their obligations. Uh, not having more children, not buying more cars, not exactly. buying more houses. Uh, it is time to save, and it's time to hunker down. Yep, and you know what, Tom? I think this is a big reality check to everybody. You know what I mean? Here, you know, I live in Southern California, and here you have to, you know, you have to drive the nice car, the nice truck. You know, because if you don't, because if you drive a crappy car, you're not going to get nobody. You're not going to get a chick, or you know, I think I think this is a big reality check for everybody that uh, 
you know, tries to live, you know, in the way which they can't. You well, know what I mean? Well, so, I understand that, and a lot of people are going to be downsizing. There's no doubt about that. George on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is George. Um, I think it's time to buy. I don't think it's, be t- it's the time to sell everything right now. You don't see these kind of dips very often in history, and if you have the cash on the sidelines, like I hope you do, it's the wrong time to be selling out of everything. Well, I do, and that actually is what I'm doing, but I wouldn't recommend that to the average person because the average person, uh, every dollar they lose, every time on paper the statement comes in and says they're down 10% or 20% or 30% or whatever it is, uh, they're losing sleep at night, and uh, people shouldn't be losing sleep at night. And I mean, if you're losing sleep, that's one thing, and, you, and if you can't relax, that's another, but um, if you're... if you're This applying... is why I don't recommend it to the average caller. Well, if... So hopefully the average caller has a 401k. They're investing every month and taking advantage of these dips as we go along. And this is a trend, it's not a dip. But I think overall, um, you shouldn't be panicking. I mean, we, you saw a retracement today of three or 400 points. That's that's a positive sign that the market is hitting a bottom. And I don't think it's hit total bottom. But um, the average person shouldn't panic. They have money in the market right now because they'll just lose. Yeah. And try- Timing the market never works. Well, um, I, I totally agree with you, George. If you've got the money, uh, that's where I'm at. I am dollar cost averaging. I'm continuing to invest in the market, but I don't think the average person can necessarily handle that. That's where I'm coming from. Vanessa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I I am an average chick, and uh, it's really rough out here right now, and God love you if you invested wisely, good for you, uh, and if you're great with your money. Um, I'm really great with my money because I have to be, but right now, you know, it, it amazes me when people talk about, uh, you know, they say, oh, well, you can always just go get a job at, you know, wherever. Uh, I've tried lately, and nobody is hiring, and not only are they not hiring, I've had people tell me, We've had to lay off people recently because nobody can afford to buy anything right now. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's, there's ever an excuse to, uh, you know, to kill people. You know, the, the man who killed his family, I mean, bless all of them because, man, that's, that is rough stuff. I think he probably had psychological problems besides that. But, you know, there's, there's nothing out there right now. So... I just wanted you to comment sound on that. you sound scared. Um, it's it is a little scary because it's you know I mean I I, I mean don't you're not family. you're not nineteen you're thirty years old. Yeah, absolutely. I'm you know and I've had I've had jobs where I've made a really good living you know good enough to to get by and have a little extra for myself. But uh, right now, what I'm doing is I feel like I'm in college again or just out of college where I'm I I'm just putting money away as I go to hopefully make rent. And then if I make rent, great. And then the rest of it, if I'm able to pay any other bills beyond that, it's a blessing. Right. I understand that. Did you ever consider leaving town, for example? Um, I've, I haven't got to that point yet. You know, like I said, I have been trying to apply at other places nearby, like in my neighborhood, so I wouldn't have to spend money on gas. You know, so I could walk somewhere, work somewhere nearby, but everywhere that I've gone, they're either not hiring or they've had to lay people off. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's hardcore stuff, Vanessa. So thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Devin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Hey, um, just listening to all this, it's really kind of gotten so crazy, and I think people just need to take a real step back. And when people are killing their families, you know, how much of this is perpetuated by just people's fear? You know, we're coming up on an election, and, you know, we see it in Southern California. Like, the guy who works security at my Whole Foods drives an Audi A4. It's this whole, like, keeping up with the Joneses. And, you know, you've always said it. I'm 24. I have money saved. And when things like this happen, it doesn't affect me because I know I can weather the storm and I know things turn around. And everything's a paper loss. People look at that statement and they see it, but it's not really a loss. By the way, everyone who's been following my advice on putting money away... 
uh, is actually going to find uh, things easier for themselves because uh price of a barrel of oil went below $90 today. That means gasoline prices are going to be dropping dramatically in the next couple of weeks. I mean, uh, the only thing I wish I had done was bought gold six months ago, you know, and I didn't, but it's... Is this well, really don't, don't kid yourself. Gold has dropped, too. Gold yeah, has I, dropped. Oil has dropped. Major commodities have been dropping. Uh, that Nothing has been going up. Nothing. I've just used it as a time to, you know, invest in things that I see as alternative energies or things that I could maybe see as taking off, you know, after the new election. And it just seems like there's always a new sense of hope and things always turn around. And with these paper losses, people, you know, lose their minds. And I, in Southern California, man, especially people I know working in real estate, it's they literally live paycheck to paycheck, but they got three cars and, you know, the $1.5 million home. And now they're selling off items from their homes. You know, to make their mortgage, and it just, I don't know, it gets pretty ridiculous. And then you have things like this, we hear about people killing their families. And themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's insane. And then, you know, six months from now, things turn around, and, you know, people are buying homes again, people are out spending. It's like, what was it all for? Well, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, we've had things good for so long now. I think people have no idea what it's like when times get bad. And they have forgotten that times go from good to bad. They also go from bad to good. That's just the way it is. Mike on the top, like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today, buddy? Doing great. Good, good. Hey, uh, Tom, you know that guy who called in earlier is trying to get the job at Budweiser. Right. Yeah. You know what the thing is, Tom? There's a there's a, a thing going on out here in uh, in the Orange County, L.A. area where these companies are blackballing anybody that was associated with any of this real estate and lending meltdown. And that guy there, for being such an educated guy that made probably tons and tons of unrealistic money, and that's what we got going on out here today, is just recently when this thing was going through the roof, we had some of the most uneducated people getting into the loan business. I had my daughter, who uh, at the time was 22 years old. Some of her friends were taking us out to dinner at places like Maestro's down in Orange County and spending four and $500 for dinners several times a week. This thing was so out of control, and these guys just thought it was party time, and now it's come to the end of the rainbow here, and there's no gold, and what's happened now is business people that are out here that are going to look to hire people are not going to even get close to anybody because they think it's an ethics issue with these people who've been uh, caused this. Uh, to me, Tom, these people are, are traitors to the country. These guys that were in the lending this, uh, the, uh, the, the loans they gave to people who couldn't qualify, in addition to these people in the stock market, what we should be doing is not only trying to get this thing back on track, but the people that are out here, I was a firefighter who worked secondary jobs. My wife was a nurse who worked secondary jobs. And what we would like to do is, hey, if this is what it takes to bail this out, to get us online, but in addition, we should be getting these guys and putting them in jail and taking all of their assets because, to me, these people are traitors to the country. Don't hold should... your breath on that, Mike. I'll tell you that right now. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. Bill on the Tom Likas Show. What's shaking, Tom? Uh, something uh, for sure. I'll be shaking some peaches after the show tonight. <laughs> hey, uh, I just wanted to say, man, people are like tea bags. You don't know if they're weak or strong until you put them in hot water. Yes. And uh, I think most and then some people just like getting tea back. You know how that works. Exactly. Right, Dean? I think Yes. You know what's going on is these people that are crying the blues and stuff that uh, that are going under. Most of them are spending money they didn't have to begin with. In credit cards, uh, high interest rates, didn't read the fine print, and now they're you know they're driving the Lexus. And they got the new home and stuff, and but they can't pay for it. Why? Because they they spent money they didn't have. Yes, I want to say hello to all the short sales, by the way. Uh, all you people who are uh, underwater on your mortgages, all you flippers. Yes, sir. I want to say That's hello right. to all of you. That's true. You know, there once was a time when like, your parents, my parents, you, would, you, you could pay the mortgage with one paycheck. You know, you, there once was a time one paycheck would pay the rent. Now, no, that's not, uh, those days are gone, man. Well, you are right about that, Bill. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom 
Mike is from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. An amazing story from the Northwest San Fernando Valley. Six people found dead. An unemployed financial advisor apparently despondent over his money problems. Shot and killed his wife, his mother-in-law, and three children before taking his own life. So that would be six, yes. Um, how bad is it for you financially? How much have you lost? Have you ever felt this desperate? It's 1-800-5800-TOM with Doug. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Hey, I uh, just want to call in an uh, interesting uh, subject you got going on here. Uh, yesterday morning, I'm at home with the kids, and uh, I hear a gunshot in my kitchen, and uh, I go out front, and I didn't hear anything else other than that, so I wasn't sure where it was coming from. And about an hour later, all the police shows up, and my neighbor across the street apparently uh, committed suicide. And uh, late 50s, early 60s, again, didn't know him real well, but uh, did know that he was in the financial industry. So... You know, it just makes you think, um, watching, you know, what happened yesterday. You know, is this something? Did he snap? You know, did he lose everything? Did he just, you know, what happened? So, like I said, I won't take any more of your time. Just interesting topic, and this stuff must happen uh, all the time. Because uh, I live in Thousand Oaks in a real nice neighborhood. And, you know, he had just his wife. I know he had a family. And 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning just decided to uh, to do this. So, just very shocking. So anyway, wow. Thank you. But, yeah. Yeah, you know, and you wonder, really. I mean, you, you you know, the thing is, you read about people committing suicide, or you read about people committing murder. But how often is it tied to the financial straits of individuals? And, you know, when you see these stories about the market dropping 800 points for a while today or 500 points on another day, you've got to imagine some people are getting squeezed. Yeah, and that's the only thing that could come to mind once uh, I talked about it with my wife that he was in the financial industry, that you got to wonder, you know, what else could have been. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Have a good one. Doug, thank you. Jana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi there. I was just listening to your show, and um, I listened to you a lot when I lived in Orange County and in, in Long Beach, and... You never had a reason to call, but I always enjoyed the show. And I, I, um, I moved from there because, um, because of work. And so I moved to, to uh, Las Vegas, came out here, and I, I just got laid off. And so it was so ironic. I'm sitting here, and I'm just listening to you on the Internet. And, you know, I'm completely desperate, looking for work, completely going outside of you know, what I'm trained to do, and I'm emailing friends, no matter what I'm looking for, you know, they're doing all the layoffs. It's really scary out here. It's affecting so many people. So, you know, I can relate to Vanessa, who just called in. And what are you going to do next, do you know? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm... Thank God I have uh, support from my family, but, you know, that can only go so far. So right now I'm just, I'm online and I'm just, I'm applying for anything. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old and I never thought I'd be back to the drawing board like I am now. And everybody I know, they're, they've stopped all these huge um, uh, construction sites out here, Echelon. They just laid off, you know, 60 people at the hospital. Unemployment's crazy out here, and I thought if there was anywhere I could get a job would be here. So it's really scary, you know? And uh, did you put money away for a rainy day? Um, no, I, I have a little bit of money set aside, but nothing to really live on because... Um, I mean, now do you see why I tell people to have six months to a year of money in case of emergency? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I... I I completely agree with you probably about 80% of the time, financially 100% of the time. Um, and, um, yeah, it's really scary. I mean, I was sitting here, and you, you just get so irritated with things. And, and um, But I would never, ever hurt or think about hurting myself or somebody else. Here I am sitting in my house Saturday, sitting here down on my luck. I hear a smash outside, and somebody hits my car and runs. And so now I'm sitting here, and you know, it just it tumbleweeds. But 
the main thing is, is just to, I just keep plugging along. And I mean, that's all you can do. But I would never hurt or kill anybody. And I couldn't imagine that somebody that would do that. Amazing stuff, Jenna. Well, good luck to you. I understand that it's going to be tough for you. And um, all I can say is uh, all my best to you. Uh, keep in touch with us. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Jose. Hey, Tom. I just wanted to share uh, my point of view. Everybody, it's, it's very tough for all of us out here that, that have to work. We all got bills to pay. The pressure is there. We just got to dig our heels in and do whatever it takes. I have to drive two and a half hours from my house to my job site. So I can make the money to pay my bills. But that's what I got to do, and I'm going to do it because um, I made some decisions and I ranked up my debt, and now I got I to gotta face it, and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And I think that people that take out their children, take out their wives and then themselves, are people that really have no self-worth. They think they're worth only what they have, and therefore if they have nothing, they're worth nothing. But if that's really not the case. They just... They've been putting their priorities in the wrong place. But, uh, you know, that's just my point of view. I understand, and um, I agree that uh, uh, people, uh, of course, are worried about money. But the main reason they're worried about money is because they don't have money. They haven't saved money. They haven't been smart about their money. And uh, that, the, you know, the fact is, if they had done what I have recommended, spend less, save more, um, put away for a rainy day and have it there, they wouldn't be upset and killing each other now, killing themselves. You're so right on that. If I would have listened to you six months ago and I would have been smart about it, I wouldn't have to drive two and a half hours to work every day. But, you know, I didn't, and I'm paying the price. I'm sorry to hear that. Jose, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. I've been telling you this for a very long time. Put money away. Have an FU fund. In case you get fired, in case you're forced to quit, in case you're laid off. Many of you ignored my advice, and now you're finding out why I recommended that. Hollis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, I just wanted to call and uh, just say the guy that killed his family and his kids, I I'm a new father. Um, I'm pretty much going through the same thing. Lost my job. I, I was a tow truck driver making fairly decent money. Not great money, but... Uh, diesel prices went up, and I got laid off, so now I had to take a, a huge pay cut in what I'm doing right now. And I, I just, I, it makes me sick to my stomach knowing that, that somebody could take another person's life, especially their own their own children. It makes me sick to my stomach. So, Yeah, imagine killing your own kids. Uh, I'm, I'm a new father, and it, 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 it breaks my heart hearing that. Yeah, uh, this is a big story, and uh, it's a story today, by the way. It's a story you'll be seeing on the news tonight. It's a story you'll see in the newspaper tomorrow. Hollis, thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Uh, not much, Mike. I hope you do. And instead of acting like a bunch of little babies, knuckle down. You focus that energy on something else. Take your ass to the gym for the day. Think of a plan and get to it. Stop acting like a bunch of little babies. You act like your parents didn't have any worse. On top of that, there's a lot of people in the recent past that were raising prices, you know, in the market, people getting greedy. That's what you all get. All my buddies that I talk to not buy expensive cars. I'm rolling in a, check this out, I'm rolling in a little Honda Civic right now, and I'm on my way to get my eyebrows done. I've been working uh, about 140 hours every two weeks. I work in the television, television industry, and um, there's people there that are not thankful for the amount of work that we get that don't do overtime. And uh, that sucks. That sucks because there's a lot of people that would be doing it uh, for a lot less. And uh, people just need to chill out, man. Well, I agree with you. Unfortunately, some people are so far in over their heads. They're so far underwater. Uh, they can't see the light of day. And those are the people who've just been spending like drunken sailors. And uh, they're going to find out the hard way now. It's Larry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hey, uh, I'm calling and just put my two cents. You know, I got I got fired from my work on uh, January. And uh, I started, you know, I kind of got scared, kind of look around the work. 
it was it's tough out there. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and started my own business. So you know, I mean, I think this society is kind of structured to um, work for a big corporation, and take the paycheck, and live. Um, you know, every other week. I think uh, a lot of people are scared to go do something. I think that's the biggest problem right now. Well, uh, people are afraid to do something because all they hear is that it's bad news at every turn. Every day you turn on the TV, it's nothing but bad news. Well, that's true. I, I mean, you know, people are getting the bad news, but, the, you know, the bottom line is, like, I worked for a big corporation for eight years and had my 401K and everything. I saved $8,000 in eight years. And my, from January to right now, I saved $6,000. What I couldn't do with a big corporation in eight years, I did it in a few months, you know? Good for you, Larry. I'm glad to hear you've got a positive uh, spin on this. Uh, Bill on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. How do you do, buddy? Doing great. Listen, uh, I just wanted to comment. Uh, I heard Kramer on Fast Money on TV the other day, the other evening, rather. He made the comment that, uh, you know, if you got money in a bank, he said, I shouldn't probably be saying this on national television, but he said, I would take it out. He said that the future... For five years in this country, is not even looking good. He said, yeah, this is the so same guy who told you to invest in Sirius Satellite Radio, which is down to 57 cents a share. Look, when uh, Jim Cramer tells me to do something, I do the opposite. I see him as a contrarian signal. Well, well yeah, that's true, but at least uh, Cramer will... In the past, he's made mistakes, and he'll at least... No, he it. makes big mistakes, and you're the one who pays the bill for them. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know that much about the guy. I Look, the it's part of the whole attitude that got us here in the first place. The idea that you can turn on the TV and magically someone's going to tell you the right stock to invest in. And you're going to make fast money, mad money. Woohoo! And look where we all are now. The Tom Likas Show.